Welcome back to our channel. I'm Teacher Cedric, and today we'll look at another question from the Raffles Primary Math Vote Contest from the year 2021. Now, we have n children arranged in a circle. The teacher would assign one of the children as the starting point, in which he would start passing a puzzle. However, he cannot pass this puzzle to whoever he likes. The teacher would choose a magic number such that he can only pass this puzzle to the child a magic number away from him. So, for example, if we have the first child as the starting position, with the magic number 2, the first child will have to first pass this puzzle to the third child, and the third child will pass this puzzle to the fifth child, and so on. And the round ends when the puzzle returns to the starting position. Now, the question tells us that this game was played five times, each with a different magical number. That is, magic number 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And in every round, there is at least one student who does not get the puzzle. Can you find the minimum number of n? Now, this question may seem a little bit confusing at first because it is the round one last question. However, in this lesson, we are going to learn the right way to approach such complicated questions. But before we get started, I want to address a confusing item. Do you think the starting position matters here? Well, if we were to switch the starting point from the first child, to the fourth child, we can simply relabel all of the children such that now the fourth child becomes the first. So we see that the starting position is irrelevant here. Therefore, we can narrow down our problem to finding the relationship between the magic number m and the children number n. However, since we are only given this information and this information, the relationship seems pretty weak, at least for now. So, what is our best strategy? Our best strategy would be to start with some simple example first to get the intuition. So, why don't we assume we have six children? Now, with the number six, the magic number can be one, two, three, four, or five. We'll look at each of them one by one. Starting with the magic number one. You see that in this case, the process will be as follows. The first child will receive the puzzle from the teacher, which he will pass it to the second child, the third, and so on. And the puzzle will return to the first child, and we know the round ends. We see that in this case, everyone gets the puzzle. Now, moving on to the magic number two, the process is as follows. We see that in this case, there are three children who did not get the puzzle. Moving on to the magic number three, we see that again, we have four children who did not get the puzzle. Now on to the magic number four. We see that in this case, the first pass would end up here. But pay close attention, the puzzle cannot return to the first child because with the magic number four, the fifth child will need to first pass this puzzle to the third child before returning it to the first child. So we see that even though we loop through this cycle twice, there are still some children did not get the puzzle. Finally, we have the magic number five. In this case, we see that everyone gets the puzzle. Now, we can summarize our findings into a table. We see that when we have the magic number 2, 3, 4, some children did not get the puzzle. But with magic number 1 and 5, everyone gets the puzzle. Our next step would be to figure out the why behind this table. Let us start with the magic number two. We see that with the magic number two, we need three passes to return the puzzle 
to the starting position. Why is that? Because the number two tells us that in every pass, we travel two steps along this circle. So, since two times three equals six, we know it will take three passes to return to the starting position. Now, with this knowledge in mind, can you figure out how many passes it would take for the magic number three? Well, since we know three times two equals six, it will have taken two passes to return to the starting position. And now, let us look at the magic number four. Something interesting is happening here. We see that there is no such number when multiplied with four would give us six. However, we still manage to return the parcel to the starting position. How did we do that? You're correct, by traveling this circle twice. We see that four times three equals 12, which is a multiple of six. So we can conclude in order to return the parcel to the starting position, we can go through this cycle as many times as we want, as long as the parcel returns to the starting position. So we can say that the round ends on multiple of 6. Now, with this, can you try to figure out how many passes it would take for the magic number 1 and 5? Let's check your answer. Now, with the magic number 1, we know 1 times 6 equals 6. So it will have taken 6 passes. With the magic number 5, we see that there is no such number when multiplied with 5 will give us 6. However, we know 5 times 6 gives us 30, which is a multiple of 6. And therefore, we see that for the magic number 1 and 5, it would have taken 6 passes. But since we only have 6 children, it would mean everyone gets the parcel. Now, what can we deduce from this table? What is so special about these two numbers such that everyone gets the parcel? Brilliant! They are co-prime with 6. If we know 1 and 5 is co-prime with 6, in order to get a multiple of 6, the only way is to multiple, multiply with 6. And what's so different about these three numbers here? What makes them work? Because they are the exact opposite of co-prime. They all share a common factor with 6. So, we can make the final conclusion. In order to have some children did not get the parcel, the magic number m and the children number n must have common factor. Now we are ready to look at our original question. We are given magic number 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And we know n must have common factor with these five numbers. Let us write down the factors of these five numbers here. From this, can you find the minimum value of n? You are correct. We simply take 2 times 3 times 7, and that is give us the final answer. 42. Brilliant! Now, for a quick review of this lesson, we know that we started with something really abstract and complex at first, with only the alphabet N and M. However, we managed to turn it into something really concrete and simple. And how did we do that? By making certain assumptions and look at simple examples. Now, in this process, is actually not so different from how real-world mathematicians deal with really complicated questions. Whenever we encounter a really abstract or complex question, we always try to find simple examples to build up our intuition. Now, to test your understanding of this lesson, I've prepared an additional question. The game was played again, but this time with 105 children. Can you find the possible value of the five smallest magic number? 
And if you want to check your answer to this question, simply scan the QR code at the end of this lesson. If you do enjoy this lesson, please press like, subscribe, and share this to your friends. I'm Teacher Cedric, and I'll see you soon.